Well, I mean, one thing we learned is that um, PlayStation 4 is indeed an easier platform to develop for. NAC had all of two programmers for much of its time, and the fact that we were able to make good progress on the title really speaks to how PlayStation 4 development is different from development on other platforms. So it's being developed by the uh, Japan Studio, which is uh, in uh, the Tokyo area in Shinagawa. It's the same studio that's responsible for uh, Ico and uh, Shadow of the Colossus, as well as Patapon and uh, Gravity Rush. And so there's a lot of people coming over to the team um, from those other projects. So for example, the art director for Gravity Rush came over and is our art director. We have the lead background artist from Shadow of the Colossus on Knack, so he designed the soft look of our worlds. It's been really fun. The team's also um, very artistic in sort of an old Japan sense. So uh, as an American going to Japan, I'm just fascinated by the culture and uh, how you can run into people where, you know, they've been making samurai swords since the year 1400 in the family, and the, in each case, the oldest son has followed in his father's footsteps. Well, our producer is a 13th, his father is a 13th generation tea ceremony master. And so he was supposed to be the 14th generation tea ceremony master, but at some point he said to dad, I want to make video games and uh, join Sony. And the um, lead designer on the project, his father is a very famous ceramicist. Uh, and he's not the oldest son, so he didn't have the same level of, of um, pressure, but it would have been very, very normal for him to, to, to follow in his father's footsteps and mm -hmm. do that. And instead, he's designing levels for Knack. What made you learn Japanese in the first place? When did that come about? So uh, I was working at Atari in 1982, and we were bought by Namco. We had um, some real financial problems during the video game crash. Uh, and so some Japanese were coming into the company. And my boss always used to talk about how no American could ever really learn Japanese, that it would be impossible. And I kind of took that as a challenge. Uh, and when I left uh, Atari, I thought, you know, wouldn't it be fun to go to Japan and really see if it's possible to ever understand that culture and learn that language? And I ended up joining Sega for seven years. Well, I think going to Japan was life-changing in the sense that, um, in addition to learning Japanese, I met a nice lady and got married and still married almost 25 years later. It was incredibly difficult, though. Uh, today, Tokyo is cosmopolitan. You go to Tokyo, there's street signs in English, there's Starbucks on any corner. When I was there in the mid-'80s, uh, there were very few foreigners, and uh, you, I knew uh, very few people who spoke spoke English, and uh, it was just hard getting around town. It, um, it was hard working in that environment. I made a game where my designer didn't speak English, and I didn't speak Japanese. I was the programmer, and we still made a game together. That's Which tough. One? Which one was that? So we did uh, the 8-bit conversion of Epic's California games. Okay. And so my designer would come and he'd studied the PC version and he'd bring me all sorts of art clips and diagrams and he'd kind of point at it and I'd, we'd look at the version running on PC and then I'd go code up the Master System version.